In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can ensure 99% of your cold outreach emails end up in the inbox. Sound too good to be true? You're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got a fresh pot of coffee and are sitting comfortably, because I'm about to show you how. First up, and just to let you know, I'm gonna be using salesforge.ai in this video, and that's the end of the video, so we'll see you later. Only joking. Okay, I am going to be using salesforge.ai, but this is a new technique that I like to call mail forging. Mail forging is essentially leveraging new technology to remove a lot of the cost and complexity from setting up your email infrastructure. And what do we mean by infrastructure? Well, that's your domains and your mailboxes. This wasn't something that was previously possible to do, but thanks to this technology from Salesforge and Mailforge, both you and I can use this technology to improve our deliverability rates and our response rates, which is what everybody's after. So let's get into it. So before we start, I think it's important to outline what actually affects email deliverability. First and foremost, it's important to make sure you've got your email infrastructure in place. And we'll show you exactly how to do that a little later on in the video. Next, it's important to actually understand how your email domains are warmed up. And for those of you who don't know, this is essentially how it works. Email providers are monitoring email activity across the internet all day, every day. And what they're essentially doing is assigning a score to all the emails that go out. These scores are divided up into buckets, which ultimately define whether your email ends up in the inbox or in the spam folder. Spoiler alert, if you're using a bad platform to conduct your warm-up activity, you haven't got a chance of getting in the inbox in the first place. The second thing to note is that email inbox providers are monitoring the activity even after the domain has been warmed up. So it's important that we maintain good hygiene and best practices when we're sending emails to continue to maintain high deliverability rates. Inbox providers are looking for patterns of repetition, things like templates being sent out that basically signal that these emails have not been written by a human. Those things are all great signals to get you landed in the spam folder. So in order to avoid that, we need our emails to appear like they've been written by humans, which is obviously a challenging feat when we're sending thousands a day. Some techniques you can employ to ensure you don't end up in the spam folder is things like refraining from using templates at scale. Make sure that you customise every email, even if it is with Spintax. And please make sure that you try and capture the attention of your reader and encourage a response. Having your prospects reply to one of your emails is a great signal to the inbox provider that this is a legit and engaging email and should be marked for the inbox. Now, obviously, you're emailing thousands of prospects potentially every week it's not realistic to be able to sit down and personalize every single email and this is where mail forging comes in as i mentioned earlier on the video we're using mailforge.ai to take care of all our infrastructure needs so let's have a look at how we actually set that up in literally minutes okay guys here we are inside the mailforge platform the first thing that you're going to see when you log in is this domain screen now this is where you actually create domains or transfer domains from an existing provider me personally, I don't have any domains yet, so I'm going to go up here to the top right and click this Create Domains button. I'm going to use AI to auto-generate my names. I'm going to say, give me a 10 domain names, and I'm going to enter my primary domain name, which is mailforge.com. Click Generate, it's going to take a few seconds to use, uh, run the algorithm and give you some um, auto-generated domain names. Okay, then what you're going to see is a list of domains that have been proposed to you. You can see that these are all available down the right hand side. You've got things like hello mailforge.com, hq.mailforge.com, whymailforge.com, etc. So these are all secondary domains that you can use alongside your primary for your email outreach. You can you can edit these if you want, if you want to change something or you can add new, the system will automatically check if they're available. All looks good to me. Click the next button in the top right. That looks good. My domain forwarding has been auto-populated. That's based on the primary domain that I just set up. DMARC email, I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, we typically recommend that you do so unless you're an email expert, which I am not. Continue, let's have a look. So sam.mailforge.ai, this is all good. Address, we can just put uh, salesforge country. That's all good. Cool, we're good to check out. Let's continue. Check me what I'm buying, $13 each. That looks good to me. Total of $130 because I'm buying 10 different domains. Let's check out. Looks good. Proceed to check out. Enter your billing optional. Da 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 da. Apply coupon. Cool. It's going to ask me to just take a look at the summary of what we're buying here. Apply coupon code. I have one because I'm lucky. Sam is hungry. Boom. That's not going to cost me anything. Proceed to checkout. Add your billing address. This all looks good to me. Next. Add your payment detail. And we're going to click subscribe. That's all there is to buying the domain names. Once you've done that, you'll come back to the screen. You'll get a confirmation email. Please make sure that you uh, authorize that email. Click proceed. 
let's just continue on from here then and see what happens. So the next step is go over to the mailbox section, which is just over here. Typically you buy a few mailbox slots. Um, I bought 10 domain names. I'm going to take two mailboxes per domain. So that's going to be $20, uh, $60 per month. Click subscribe. Again, you'll be taken to a checkout screen. Apply a coupon code if you have one for bacon. Proceed to checkout and we are done. Okay, so the next step, once you've created your domains and your mailboxes, you've verified through email, you'll come back to the domain screen here. And at the top, you can see we've got our active domains. We've got zero out of 20 mailbox slots. So we head on over to the mailboxes tab and we need to actually create some mailboxes. So how you do that is if you simply click the button there, uh, I'm gonna auto generate mailboxes in this case. So in this drop down menu, we simply just select the domain names we wanna create those mailboxes against which are those that I just bought. And I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna typically, what we'd recommend is that you create two mailboxes per domain. Max three, but two is generally best practice. Hit next. And then here you get to set up your sender names. So you can either predefine these um, or you can randomize them, male and female. In my case, I'm gonna uh, create predefined names, one for each mailbox per domain batch. So that's that top option. And I'm going to put Sam Duggan, because that's my name, Good spell. Hit the next button, and then this section is where I set up my signature. Um, so go ahead and put whatever you want in there. I typically have first name, surname, and title. So let's say head of growth. Uh, and then I'll probably put in mailforge.ai and salesforge.ai. Maybe you could put your phone number or anything else in there. We typically don't recommend putting any links into your signature at this point because it can affect deliverability, so best to stick with kind of plain text. Put an email forwarding option uh, in there if you would so like. And then the next and final step is just to hit this generate 20 mailboxes button. So there we go. You can just review all the information here. You'll see how these are all against different domains and change anything, you know, as and when you like. If you're all happy, you can click create 20 mailboxes. And that's that. So what the system will do now, it'll actually set up those mailboxes in a matter of minutes. And you can see how quick and easy it simply is to take care of all your email infrastructure problems. And there we have it. The final step is to either export all these new domains and mailboxes that you've created or simply connect it to your Salesforge account. If you're using another sending platform that isn't Salesforge, then you click this top right button here, which is the export button. You can either export it straight as a CSV or into your Salesforge account. It's that simple. Hopefully you enjoyed that. So now you've got your email infrastructure set up, let's talk a bit about warm up. How do you actually warm up these new domains? Well, the great news is if you're a customer of salesforge.ai, this is taken care for you automatically. The Salesforge technology leverages a new multi-language AI system that ensures that it delivers emails in the language of the country that they're being sent in. The great thing about this technology is because of its complexity, it signals to the inbox provider that this email has actually been written by a human when it hasn't. Another great signal which will get you back in the inbox. Okay, so we've got our infrastructure set up. We've talked a bit about warming up domains. Now let's have a look at sending. Again, to reiterate the point, it's important that these emails come across like they've been written by humans. And again, avoiding templated outreach is a great way to signal to your inbox provider that that's the case. A good way to achieve this, and perhaps the most basic, is to use something called spin tax or spinning syntax. And for those of you who don't know, this is essentially when three or four words in the email are given different options and are randomized between all the emails that get sent out. For example, you might use, hi there, hello, hey there, how's it going, and interchange those for each email that goes out. And if that's not quite clear, here's a look at how you actually do that in the Salesforge platform. Okay, so here we are inside the Salesforge platform. So you'll have been through all the stages, you've created your sequence name, selected the product that you're assigning it to, you go through and select your contacts that you want to send the sequence to, you verify all their email, go through email validation and you end up in this builder stage here. Now Salesforce already gives you some sort of idea of how to use Spintax by adding in these kind of greyed out watermarked ideas for you to start with. So all you really need to do is add in two of these kind of curly brackets, add in your seed word if you like, which in this case would be hi. And from there, we can add in any synonyms that we want to use. So we put a, a pipe bar and say, hey, another pipe bar, hi there. And then maybe we'll say, hello. Two more curly brackets to close it. 
You'll notice there that you also get a helpful tip when you've got incorrect syntax, syntax uh, in the composition screen there. So we'll add in our second bracket. Let me just put a comma, and then I'm just going to add in a uh, send a first name. Um, and then you can add in the subsequent paragraphs, etc., etc., and you are good to go. So as those emails get sent out, what the system will do will rotate between those different words, which will make your email look more human and that it's not just a single templated one size fits all approach. So leveraging Spintax is an okay solution, but it only gets you so far. Over time, customers and inboxes are going to realize that these are templated emails with a little bit of personalization sprinkled in. And this is where the Salesforce technology really comes into its own. Salesforce leverages AI to hyper personalize every single email that gets sent at scale. This is obviously a great thing for deliverability because again, it signals to the inbox provider that only really a human could personalize these kind of emails at this scale. So the inbox provider assumes it's not been written by a computer. Inside Salesforce, you can use this technology to create icebreakers. We generally see about a 2x relative lift in reply rates from customers who are using this technology. Let's have a look inside the Salesforce platform now at how this works. Okay, so here we are back in the Salesforce platform and I'm going to show you how to insert an icebreaker into your emails and this is super quick and easy and it really does change the game because it takes LinkedIn data and creates a really personalized, nice sort of icebreaker which will get your clients or customers attention. So all you would do is jump over into the composition window and let's just draft a quick email. So I'm going to say, hi, hello, hey there. At the start, maybe we'll throw in a first name, and then all I'm simply going to do is two squiggly brackets and type icebreaker, and let's just sign it off. Send the first name. Really is that simple. By the way, if you're not using Salesforge or MailForge.ai, there's a link in the video description. You can sign up for a seven day free trial of Salesforge right now. You'll also be able to book a call with one of the Salesforge teams and they will hold your hand while you create your first campaign to make sure you're completely comfortable with the system and understand how the AI works and just to make sure that it doesn't butcher any of your emails. Now, there's also one other cool feature of Salesforge that I haven't yet talked about and that's called Overdrive. In a nutshell, Overdrive effectively allows you to customize your complete email in one click. Let's have a quick look at how that works inside the Salesforge platform. Okay, so here we are again inside the Salesforge platform and let's take a look at how Overdrive actually works so we've defined the name and product we've imported our contacts we've been through email validation which again is super important to keep your bounce rate low you'll arrive at the sequence builder so here we have um, an email composition screen and to get into overdrive mode all you simply need to do is click this generate with AI slider here on the right hand side we're just going to close that down for the time being and we're going to toggle on overdrive mode so what that enables you to then do is we scroll down here and you can see for your initial email, we choose contact information source. So that's going to take information around the prospects LinkedIn and their website, their business website, merge that all together and overlay programmatic A to Y. That will also then take into account your product data. So it'll understand the problems that you're solving for your customers, your value proposition and the cost of inaction. So the pain that these customers or prospects might feel if they don't solve that problem. You can also then select the tonality, so playful, hilarious, formal, curious, etc. I'm going to choose hilarious because I am quite a hilarious character. Um, and I'm going to click next. And I'm going to click next. So again, this might take up to a minute. What we're actually doing is doing a load of calculations and trying to write an email based on all that information that you've already put into the Salesforce platform and that is also being scraped from your prospects LinkedIn and website. And that's all there really is to it. And as you can see, we've created a completely unique email and this can be done at scale for all of the customers in your uh, data set or all of your prospects. Then the final step here is to auto generate all and that will actually apply this overdrive to all the contacts in your data set. Um, so everyone gets that completely unique hyper-personalized email. From there, you follow the usual steps, set up the scheduling, go through to next, finish any finalized settings that you wanna do, 
and literally click launch sequence and it really is as easy as that. The last great thing about Salesforge when it comes to deliverability is that it can also translate your email outreach into multiple languages. Again, another wonderful thing that increases engagement and reply rates with your content, which feeds back into great deliverability. Now, you might be new to the cold email space and are still trying to decide between which platform you want to use to actually send your cold outreach emails. Over here, we've got a video that compares Salesforce with Instantly, which is another great platform for you to check out. Hopefully that can help you make a decision. That's about it for today's video. So just to recap, in order to nail your deliverability, email infrastructure is the first thing that you need to worry about. Make sure you've got multiple domains and multiple mailboxes set up and are rotating sends between them. Ensure your domains are warmed up and implement as much personalization into your outreach as possible in order to mimic human behavior, which is a great signal, and include as much personalization into your content as possible. That's it for today's video. Remember, hit the subscribe button. More cold email strategy videos coming soon. I'll see you in the next video.